Hey everybody, Connor here today, dotrailer.com. We're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here for our 2019 Mazda CX-3. So this is what our trailer hitch is gonna look like installed. As we can see, it has an almost completely hidden installation. And what I mean by this, the main cross tube here, which supports the receiver tube, is gonna be hidden entirely behind the bumper. So the only thing we're gonna be able to see here is the receiver tube opening, which is just gonna give us a very uh, seamless factory-like finish install look. So our Kurt trailer hitch here has a class one rating with a one and a quarter inch receiver tube opening. Now this is gonna allow us to do several different things. If we wanna hit the trails, we'll be able to attach a bike rack. If we need to free up some space inside the vehicle, we can attach a cargo carrier. And last but not least, if we want to go camping, we can easily pull a trailer with the class one and one and a quarter inch opening here. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch is going to provide us with a 2000 pound gross trailer weight rating. Now what this means is this is going to be how much we can pull outward on the trailer hitch on our fully loaded trailer. It's also going to provide us with a 200 pound ton weight rating. And what that means is that's going to be the vertical force here, the downward vertical force on the receiver tube opening. Now keep in mind, these are the capacities for our trailer hitch, which is tested independently of our vehicle. So we do need to take a look in the vehicle's owner's manual to ensure the capacities meet or exceed the hitch. If they do not, we'll have to abide by the lower of the two ratings. So if we take a closer look at the receiver tube here, we see Kurt has this nice collar, which just gives it a better look on the end of our receiver tube. And if we look behind this, we'll see the industry standard half inch diameter hitch pin hole. This is gonna accept a standard hitch pin and clip, which are sold separately here through e-trailer. If you would like, you can also opt for a locking hitch pin to provide a little bit of measure of security. And on the bottom of our receiver tube, you can see we have these safety chain loops. Those are easily gonna accept our smaller S-type hooks, no problem, without any interference from our hitch pin. So now we have a couple measurements here for you. The first one I always like to give on some of these vehicles that sit a little bit, little bit lower to the ground here is the ground clearance measurement, which is from the ground to the bottom of the receiver tube. That is gonna be right at about 10 inches. And the second measurement I would like to provide is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. This measurement will be useful when we're selecting our ball mount. That way we can get the correct rise and drop in according to our trailer. So this measurement here is gonna be about 11 and a half inches. And the final measurement we have for you here is the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of our bumper. That measurement will be useful when we're selecting our folding accessories such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. That way we can make sure while the accessory is in the stowed position that it doesn't come into contact with our vehicle. That's gonna be about right at four inches. So in regards to installation, this is definitely gonna be one of the simpler ones you can do. So I don't recommend going to a shop and paying someone to do this because you can definitely do this at home by yourself without any extensive mechanical knowledge or any special tools really. So let's go ahead and jump into that installation and show you how to do it yourself. So the first step of our installation here, we need to go ahead and lower our exhaust here. You can see we have this large muffler. And the reason we need to do this is because we're gonna have to sneak our trailer hitch up over the exhaust and sort of behind the bumper in this area here. So in order to lower our exhaust, we're first gonna need to take some sort of device we can use to support the tailpipe here, or this um, intermediate pipe, whatever you wanna call it. Um, we're gonna be using a uh, support strap here. It's sort of like a cam buckle ratchet strap. Really anything you have, if you're working on the ground, you, could cut, you can put a couple blocks of wood, or if you have a jack stand. Really, we just don't want this to fall completely to the ground. We just want it to be supported when we remove the exhaust isolators. So we're just gonna take this little cam buckle strap here. We're gonna find two points here to latch onto. Just use the lower control arms there. So then we're gonna pull our strap tight here. And as you can see, it's gonna support our exhaust pipe here once we break the hangers free. So we're underneath the vehicle here, directly behind the rear bumper. If we take a look on the side here, you'll see we'll have our two exhaust hangers here. There's gonna be two on either side. 
What we need to do now is we're gonna take a spray solution here, any sort of lubricant you have here, and we're gonna spray this bottom metal hanger where it goes into the rubber isolator. Because the next step here is we're gonna take some sort of tool, we'll show you that next, and we're gonna pry out this hanger from the isolator on both sides for the front and back hanger. So in order to remove the hanger from the rubber isolator here, you have a couple different options for tools. There's a tool designed specifically for this, which we see here. Chances are you're probably not gonna have this at home, so what you can use is some sort of pry bar. Uh, if you have a tire iron in the car, that'll probably work as well. And we'll show you how to use this one first, just because you're more likely to have this at home. But essentially, we're just gonna find a point to wedge this on. That way we can pry the rubber hanger out of the, or we can pry the metal hanger out of the isolator. Just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that on our other three hangers as well, except we're gonna be using our exhaust hanger removal tool because it's a little bit easier to use. So if we come back underneath the vehicle here, if we look above where our tailpipe cutout is, directly behind our bumper, we're gonna see two nuts here. Now these are gonna be holding the bumper beam onto the body. We're gonna remove the two lowermost nuts on either side. In order to do this, we're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket. So once we get both of those off, we'll just repeat that process on the other side. So in our kit here, we're gonna have four 3 8 inch flat washers. We're gonna place one of these flat washers over each of our bumper beam studs that we just removed the nuts from. So we're gonna have two on each side. We're gonna go ahead and do both sides now. So now we can go ahead and take our trailer hitch here and set it up in a position on the vehicle. Now it actually is pretty light, so you should be able to do this with just one person. But we're gonna have to come up and over our exhaust here, so we do need to come in at an angle. So now that we have the hitch up into position, we can go ahead and just loosely install our 10 millimeter factory nuts onto the bumper beam studs. Once we get those two on, for the most part, we might wanna push up on the hitch a little bit to make sure they're square. We can go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. So once we have our factory nuts installed, we're gonna turn our attention here to the passenger side of the frame you can see here, we have our factory tow point, which hangs down. This is actually gonna be used for our hitch installation. There's gonna be a corresponding hole on the other side of our trailer hitch. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a carriage bolt that comes in our kit, along with our square hole spacer. The square hole spacer is gonna slide between the trailer hitch and that tow port, and it's gonna line up with the hole there through the end of our trailer hitch and a tow point. So we should be able to sneak it through there like that. And then we wanna make sure that the carriage bolt side lines up with the hole on the other side of our trailer hitch. And then we can finally follow this up with our flange nut and tighten it down. So we're gonna begin tightening with these top four nuts here that attach to our factory bumper studs. So now we can come back with our torque wrench here. We're gonna start by torquing the four nuts for the factory bumper beam studs down to the specifications in our owner's manual. We're gonna be using the same 17 millimeter deep well socket we used to remove them. Now finally, we can take our 19 millimeter socket, we can torque down our final carriage bolt here, again, to the specifications in our manual. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation. 
of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here for our 2019 Mazda CX-3.